Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be a Patreon cast for those of you who support me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least $1 a month. It's gonna be Soma vs. Snow from Caster Muse Star League Season 3. Top right, we've got ourselves a red Zerg player. It is Soma, an excellent Zerg player. And in the bottom right, a terrifying Protoss player. It's gonna be Snow. Sporting the color blue. All right, man. So this is Neo Electric Circuit. A kind of a weird map here, right? Throwback to when your base was in a low place compared to the rest of the map. But the Vespin Geyser placements and mineral placements are not as bad as they were back in 1998. So once again, if you're watching this in the month of May, hang on a second. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, May. May the 26th or so uh, that week. Thank you very much for supporting me for at least a dollar a month. I really do appreciate it. And if you're watching this in the month of June or maybe July, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here six times a week with StarCraft II content. All right, so walling off. It's kind of weird here on Neo Electric Circuit. I don't think that Ling can get through here, but we'll have to wait and see. And what build is Soma doing, you may ask? Well, it's not an early pool, that's for sure. <laughs> or an overpool. It is a hatch first. Here at the safe location, without any gas, at 12 supply. Safe in that you can't access it through ground unless you go through here, right? But in order to get that safety, you have to forego a, a Vespine Geyser at your second base. So maybe that means we're going to be a... maybe a Ling Flood? Maybe a Ling Flood from Soma? With a hatch first? Hmm... maybe not. Maybe not indeed. So the probe scout of the correct direction immediately, which means this Zealot will be moving up to the top right immediately upon completion, especially because the spawning pool is not complete. Oh, the probe killed a drone, but a drone killed the probe. You were avenged, Mr. Drone. Hmm. So, gateway first, scouted. And apparently this drone doesn't want to do any more scouting. Gonna leave that up to Terry here. Yeah, I know. Just be careful of those spinning blades, all right? All right, Terry. Everything is super duper cool. Side disruptor stack protecting this. <clears throat> if you want to get this down, you better bring splash damage. So yeah, this is some pretty typical stuff. Protoss zealot moving out. Got a probe with him. Just extra little DPS here. So like four lings can't easily kill a zealot and a probe. You have to micro really well, and even then it can be difficult. So probe says, how many lings are popping out? Four. Cool. Run for it, but there's actually more than that. Look at this extra lings. He sees this isn't a wall. He's like, mm, if I can maybe get some slow lings down here in time. They're not going to be speed lings, though, which is the whole thing. Is this zealot running for it? Wow, he's running for it. He got a couple hits off on the natural and was like, peace. I'm out. These four lings are here to kill the probe. And these lings are coming back around, too. So, yeah, recognizing, okay, slow lings aren't going to be able to do a whole lot here. Are we going to get speed with our gas? Just starting to get gas now. It doesn't seem like it's going to be worth it. So finally killing the second. By that I mean it slips out of containment. Ah, this is so annoying for slowlings. There you go. That was some nice, nice little control there. It could have been dodged, I think, by Snow if he was paying attention to it. But he chose not to do that much. So a bunch of lings are out. Like, this is a lot of Zerglings. And there's, I guess there's three Zealots coming up. So you know what? Fair enough. Let's make some more lings. <laughs> Three zealots require 12 lings to kill, and that depends on the micro of everybody involved here. So, zealots trying to hack away, ooh, actually walking through the hatchery, pathing does some weird stuff sometimes, doesn't it? So, gonna try to poke at you, right? Try to get. Oh, it's four zealots now? Where did the fourth one appears as if by magic? This is some really concentrated zealot pressure. This is something that Bisu does in ZVPs and has a lot of success with it. Look how annoying. You force the Zerg player to make all of these Zealot, all of these Zerglings, right? And then you can't even kill the Zealot. And they try to get in there. And then they get back. <laughs> and you can't kill them easily because they're really well positioned. And this guy slips through your little Zergling finger. This is just 
absolutely sick play. The Lings are like, all right, screw this. We're attacking you anyway. This is disgusting zealot positioning, though. This is like some of the best zealot positioning you're ever going to see. Snow is excelling here at it. Metabolic boost is now on the way. So going metabolic boost after the lair. And then Spire? What are we doing with that lair tech? You don't have just you don't have a lot. A lot of drones. And you can't even saturate this third base at all. Because there's zealots sitting back here waiting for you to do that. Actually, you might be able to work from this mineral patch on like this mineral patch. But the other ones are a little scary. Mm, it is a spire. Okay, so basically this is defense though. This is him recognizing, okay, I really can't get any mutalisks out here today. I'm not going to have a ton of gas by the time that spire finishes. I'm only on the one geyser. Zell, okay, finally clearing out these zealots. Really trying their best. Only one kill on that guy. Three on that one though. That's pretty good. And cleared out three kills. Gets the three kills. All right. So all is safe and well in Zerg land now. The Zealot aggression is over. It's definitely slowed the Zerg player down. He's got a bunch of Zerglings he doesn't know what to do with because they can't get through this wall with the cannon behind it and Zealot's holding it as, I mean, as stalwart as these Zealot warriors are for the Protoss. Did, ooh, yeah, so we're getting Corsairs. Getting plus one. Oh, ground weapons. Okay, so not intending to go probably for a ton of Corsairs here. Citadel of a Dune coming in for Zealot Legs to deal with the probable Hydralisks in the future. That is two macro hatches. Oh, is that another one? That's a spire. Right. It's just very big and in the position where the spire was. So no Hydra Den. Is he going to go mute us? Is this going to be a mutalisk thing from Soma and I was just wrong about it? Maybe. Seems very possible here. So set of Scourge are on the way. This Corsair is delayed to make that Zealot pressure. So usually the Scourge isn't there by the time the Corsair shows up. But in this game, it will be. It'll be out, the set will be ready to go, Corsair comes in, Lings scout that action out, and... Yeah, I'm gonna show up, and then Scourge are gonna pop. Where are you, Scourge? 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 Where did they pop from? He is making mutas. Alright, so I'm at... <laughs> You believe in the power. You believe the power of the mutalisk. Oh, you know what? It's Soma. What was I thinking? Arguing that he wasn't going... Ooh. Corsair down. That's where the Scourge were down here somehow. Yeah. I mean, if any Zerg player in the world right now, Soma likes his mutos more than anybody of the pros. Oh, this is amazing. So, we're gonna go... Zealot legs. Macro hatches. Out the wazoo! Oh my gosh. One. Two. Three. Four. He's got five total hatch. Six total hatches on three bases. I love it. I like it a lot. A lot of production here. Mutos are gonna try to get some damage done, but the Corsairs are mean. I'm going to splash damage the heck out of these guys. And there's five of them. And they took down a probe and now they're fleeing. And I kind of like that play. Like, let's just... Let's be chill. Let's be chill here a little bit of DTs on the way from Snow. That's pretty neat stuff. Only one Overlord protecting this whole third base. Scourge are hunting. Hunting for Corsairs. Zealot's taking a bit of a roundabout path. Avoiding the scouting Terry the Overlord here. I think that's Terry. Terry might be dead, actually. I need to dive back in. So the Corsairs aren't going to want to move out until these Mutas are dead. Scourge are getting... Oh, I think the Scourge are getting target fired a little bit. One of the Corsairs does go down to Scourge fire, though. And the Zealots show up, and the drones are... I mean, this is... <laughs> He's got Overlords up, I think, to prevent the Zealots from choosing what they target. I think that's what these Overlords are placed here for. Or maybe because they're worried about, you know... A DT showing up, and they don't have enough detection to prevent that. Anyway, Zealots run into the natural base. This high ground safe location, I say with finger quotes, because holy not safe. Yeah, DT needs to be target fired here, because these overlords don't have speed. So, yeah, gets a couple drone kills on the gas. Nice target firing there for sure. The Zealots are now in the main base, causing all sorts of havoc. Wreaking all sorts of havoc here today. Storms on the way. More Corsairs being produced. Hydralisks are on the way in the production tab now for Soma. Does this Zealot have kills? Got a three. All right. Three kills pretty good on that, dude. 74 to 67 supply. Bigger army here from Soma, but not by a whole lot. Actually, we were pretty close to even on that one. So Mutaflot continues to grow. There used to be five, and guess what? Now there are seven. Dun, dun, dun. Corsair count is casually four. Do they have the plus one attack upgrade? No. Yeah, I thought maybe it was plus one attack for the for the flyer units initially when I saw that, but instead it was plus one attack for the zealots, which make them pretty darn good when they have that plus one attack, as we see here, and the speed. 
they are pretty formidable indeed at this stage of the game. So, alright, tons of production available. He kept all of it alive. He kept lost a couple drones, but it's 48 to 47 workers at the moment. I don't know. I feel like Soma's in a pretty good position. He's going to take a fourth base at the 12 o'clock. A little bit dangerous. It's a naked expand, but I guess the mutas are kind of covering it. They're fast enough to respond to threats like, I don't know, zealots wandering across the map and trying to kill your newly producing fourth base. One of the zealots splits off and is like, I got this. I got this, boys. Zoom. Right up. He's going to check to make sure at least that, that there's a base here. And there is, so that's cool. Let's get some free hits off on it. No? We're hiding in case Lings show up to try to shut this down. But it's going to be Mutas instead. Hydros? No. Not really working out here, is it? There are High, Tem are High Templar with Storm here. Oh, yeah. There are High Templar with Storm here. There's a DT out too, but he gets out of there before the... Overlord shows up. There's only one Overlord, though. That could be sniped by the Corsair pretty easily. And that group of Corsairs is... Yeah, that's five of them now. He stopped producing them for now, but this is a lot of Hydralisks. It's just Storm, right? You die to this as Protoss unless you're doing what Snow is doing. He's got speed lots. He's got Storm, okay? And a few cannons to help with that, too. Because this is a ton of Hydras. We got Lurker Aspect on the way here, too. Singularity Charge is now on the way. Oh, 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 he's trying to snipe it. He's really trying to snipe that Overlord. It'd be really nice if it was dead. Oh, the Zealots are trying to make the Hydras flee so that the target on the Overlord succeeds. Nice, beautiful target on that Overlord. And other Hydras have to back the heck off because you don't know how many DTs exist out there. Here's one now, for example. That's the previous one. Mutas darting into the, oh, safe third base high ground position here. Not great, not safe at all, actually. Cannon does its thing, buy some time so the probes can live, and then the Corsairs come and chase them away. So fourth base up from Soma, making 10 hiders at a time, 47 workers for this dude. He's looking great. Soma is really scary, but you know, Soma, ah, the storms, the storms. Oh my gosh. All but three of the mutas are dead. Did all the High Templar get sniped there? I think all the High Templar got sniped. Okay, that was probably worth it. I gotta say, nope, these are not new. These are High Templar that have been around for a while. They've got two storms available on them each. So, all right, you might think there aren't any storms in there, but let me tell you something. The number of storms a Protoss has remaining when you're fighting them as Zerg is about one more. It's always one more. Always one more than you think it is, that's for sure. Like, okay, that's got to be their last one. Move in, storm. You're like, Rah! That's the sound that you make of infinite suffering. Oh, okay, High Templar. the don donated High Templar? What was that all about? He's like, hey, look. I'm donating High Templar. You can come in here. It's totally safe. No, it's not totally safe. Now another Overlord gets killed. This isn't going to work. You're just trying to supply block. You're not trying to make DTs actually get something done here, are you? That would be silly. But also Soma investing in like a single score would be pretty cool. Yeah, Hyder's pressuring. Zealots move out. Hyder's pull back. That is a dance. A ZVP dance for the ages right there. Both players going for damn upgrades. A lot of Zealots, man. This is Muchas Zealot. And the storms keep coming, and they don't stop coming as per usual. Like I said, there's always one more storm available. Oh my gosh, we have the Kadaran Amulet upgrade now? Okay. Ah, beautiful storm. Zealot's coming in to clean this out. This is good from Snow. This is great from Snow. Really doing some cost-efficient trades here with these lurkers, but... Or these lurkers, these zealots, but lurkers are here now. And the Zerg player is pretty happily on four bases, and Snow has to kill his own gateway, which is not good news ever. You want that production facility, but you also want to get out of your natural, too, so the life is full of sacrifices. Hive on the way from Soma. Lurker is burrowing in. Burrowing in. This is really not looking good for Snow all of a sudden. This is a lot of Zerg outside your front door. Trying to dodge Storm as much as he Zergily can here. For the Swarm. Man, which reminds me, I just watched the latest season of Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix, which, man, I loved season one. Season two is kind of forgettable, but season three is great. It's, it's like gore warning. It's like really bloody and gory. I think even more than season one, which is a little bit crazy. But there's an episode called The Swarm, which StarCraft fans might might kind of see some, some things that are familiar to them in there. Boop. Overlord checking to make sure he's not getting ninja'd. These mutas are gaining health eventually, which is nice. 
Yeah, this is a problem. I mean, if you're a Protoss and you can't get out of your front door, I know you have a third base to work with on this map, which is great. You're not stuck on two bases, but being stuck on three is hardly any better. The longer the game goes on, these Lings are attacking. They don't have Adrenal yet. But you're just stuck. Like, I don't know that Snow has an ability to get out of here. Does tick down a Lurker? Ugh, can't even get that Lurker. Hit it like... 17 times with Dragoon shots. Couldn't pull it off. There you go. The 18th one is the one that you needed. <laughs> Another base coming up from Soma, though. Good grief. One, two, three, four. It's a fifth base for him. Let's look at the minimap. Look at how cornered the Protoss is right now. Ah, oh, Archon gets totally sniped. Never a good thing at all. You have the storms for these Lings. You want to kind of hold... If you don't storm your own zealots, yeah, really, the hiders need to be the priority target here. I think lings can be handled with these zealots at this stage of the game. Once they have adrenal, they're going to be a much, much bigger problem. I just... The zerg keeps swarming in! Adrenal is done now, but storm does not care about your adrenal upgrade. Not by any stretch. Lurker is getting cleared out. Is snow kind of busting here? It's 145 to 117 supply. The Protoss has a pretty gosh darn ginormous army. But Ling Hydra versus Zealot is pretty amazing. Ah, and once again, Snow has to retreat back to the safety of his own natural base here. I snipe on the OBS for that OBS snipe a million miles away. And now the Lurkers are much harder to deal with. Another OBS is coming out to try to save the day here. Ten Zealots at a time are being produced. Can Snow make it? Can he break out? If he can't break out soon, the Zerg player is going to own the entire map. And that's just going to be it for Snow. I don't care how good you are, another ob snipe. I don't care how good you are as a Protoss. If the Zerg owns the entire map and you're on three bases, you're going to die. You, against an elite Zerg player, you're just going to die. I don't care if it's Bisu. Bisu on three bases could not beat a Soma who has taken the entire map and Bisu's on three bases. Another High Templar wanders in and dies. Needs better High Templar control. I feel like, and I mean, uh, Snow keeps trying to get out of here, but it's 2 2. Hydras, the Dragoons have plus one attack and plus two armor, along with the Zealots, which means the Archons are doing some pretty fantastic stuff, too. That real. Mm, that real time lighting, that high def lighting, too, is really nice on the Protoss. So, okay, maybe a little bit of breathing room. Maybe you can come down here and expand if you control this area. I'd be sending a probe out here really, really fast. If I was Snow, he needs a fourth base, like he needs oxygen. And actually pulling back here is Soma. Is he really not going? Man, we saw a game like this on Grand Line between Hyuk and Noob. I think also from Caster Muse Season 3, and it was very much like this. It was Hydra's Lings, and it was Lurkers, and it was no Defiler tech at all. None. It was just these units. And it did really well against Noob. We'll see. We'll see if that happens here today. This fourth base staying alive. Yeah. Pull the army to cover the... Oh, no, 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 no. These Lings jumping on it. Oh, my gosh. They're jumping on it with a Dreedal. And they oppose what it's like. No. No. <laughs> oh. Uh dead oh that's massive and you avenged it but those four lings are definitely worth the time it's going to take you to reconstruct another nexus for the zerg soma is just absolutely pleased as punch here oh so many hydrolysis i mean storm does not really care about them all that much but snow backed into a quarter if he can hold the fourth he can do it all there's only zealots remaining though and they are getting rightfully destroyed here by the sheer number of that's it that's your gg he couldn't hold on to the fourth that's gonna be all she wrote bam snow leaves the game and soma is your winner here in 19 and a half minutes absolutely incredible display of macro from soma here today he lost so many more units than snow did but he had all of the bases he had four bases then he had five bases then he just kept pumping Lings and Hydras with upgrades with the 2-2 two, two, and the Adrenal for the Lings and the plus one attack. And without the Adrenal, this little four Lings sneak down doesn't happen at all.
Incredible. Like a truly, truly, truly incredible, incredible play there from Soma. If you keep your Protoss opponent backed into a corner like this on three bases for 19 minutes on this map especially, that's it. You're just, you get the win. I don't know what else to tell you here. It's a victory for you. Crazy, crazy, crazy display. Dodged the storms as well as any Zerg can dodge storms. And didn't need to file her tech at all. So this strategy is viable. It's just hard. It's just really hard to deal with. It's really hard to execute. Okay, it's hard to execute as a Zerg player. And it's hard to deal with for a Protoss from a player who can execute it extremely well. Which is what Soma is here today. The mute opening... I mean, honestly, if the mute opening did nothing else but snipe like three or four High Templar that were here at the front door, worth, worth it for them. Really slow down the High Templar production and storm availability. It didn't feel like it. I mean, the storms weren't infinite. So the fact that some High Templar died means that saved a bunch of Zerg lives for sure. He has a Defiler mount. I just, I don't think he ever even got consumed. I think he smelled blood and he was like, I could get consumed or I could make another group of Zerglings. I could get consumer, I could make some more Hydras, right? Another Lurker. And he didn't. And that, that can be the death of a lot of players, right? You'd be like, oh, I could get some upgrades here, but I feel like I can take my opponent out if I just make another couple of groups of army and then it doesn't work and then you don't have upgrades and you lose the upgrade battle and you lose the caster battle and then you're toast. But nope, not today. Not today from Soma, not even close to that. So hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Protoss fans probably not as happy today as the Zerds. 141,000 points there from Soma. 134 from Snow. Yeah, outproduced the Protoss. 498 to 241. And then, uh-huh. 318 Zerg units died today compared to only 160 or so for the Protoss. So that's a 2 to 1 ratio, but only outproduced 2 to 1 ratio? Thumbs up. That's going to work out just fine for you as a Zerg player. And then outspent, yep, outspent with those extra bases, 42,000 to 37,000. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's really effective stuff here by Soma. He is a beast and terrifying. And the future of Soma is just nothing but bright. So well done. Well done to the Zerg player. He gets the win in today's Patreon cast. And that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.